Welcome to the Indian concept of personality part 3. Today we shall deal with the Triguna theory. Behavior is an integral part of mankind and behavior emanates from thinking and feeling. Relatively stable behavior is termed as personality. So into the Triguna theory of personality. By the way, what brings out the best in one's personality? It is nothing but introspection of one's own behavior. This will help us to rectify if anything that has to be done. Plus, it helps us to understand others' behavior. Accordingly, we can make some adjustments and to get along with them. As per the Triguna theory, there are three gunas existing in each one of us. They are Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. It means these gunas never exist in isolation. We find all these three gunas in each one of us. They keep competing with each other and the predominance of one guna makes us that guna predominant as a personality. For example, if sattva is predominant, we call them as sattva predominant personality or rajo predominant personality or tamasic personality. It doesn't mean other gunas are not there. All gunas are there in each one of us. Actually, we need all three of them. Tamas is essential to take rest, to relax the body for sleep. Rajas is essential for activity, for enthusiasm, for energy. Sattva is of course essential for purity. The interrelationship amongst these gunas also plays an important role as indicators of health and well-being. A particular guna offers a set of characteristics to a person's personality. Now let us see what happens if a person is sattva predominant. When sattva becomes predominant, a person's intellect works steadily. The person becomes fearless and pure at heart. The person tends to be more calm and peaceful and very compassionate to everyone around the person. So when purity, wisdom and goodness is at its peak, we call them as sattva predominant persons. Sattva is actually a filter that decides what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is not good, not just for the self but for everyone around the person. Being sattva predominant also means having self-discipline and self-control. In whatever the person thinks, the person has in his mind a concern, a genuine concern for everyone. Sattvic persons render their responsibilities not just as their duty but as a passion. All the responsibilities are taken with lots of care and concern. Such a person has got no doubts and has clarity in everything. Sattva is blessed with so many wonderful divine qualities. If we have to pick four specific qualities of a sattva predominant person, it will be inner silence, mental strength, self-control and compassion. Now let us see the second quality called Rajas. Rajoguna predominant persons are always active and enthusiastic. They are passionate about life. They have many things to do. Movement is very important for them. To bring in excitement and enthusiasm, we definitely need Rajas. If this Rajasic activity is combined with a higher thought, higher Sattvic thought, it leads to betterment. On the other hand, rajas associated with tamas pulls the person downwards. It can lead to lots of negativity in the society. Rajas can also lead to over-attachment. It can lead to more and more desires, more and more thought processes happening in the head. Such a person tends to be restless. That is why it is very essential that we have all three gunas in the right proportion, in the right way working and contributing for the growth of the self. Excess of this Rajoguna or predominance of Rajoguna makes a person more self-centered. Everything revolves around the self. One can go to the extent of disturbing the peace and integrity of others. Rajoguna predominant persons have a tendency to cross all boundaries. So always it is best to combine Rajas with a Sattvic thought. Let us see Tamoguna predominance. Tamas stands for inertia, rest, laziness, darkness, destruction. A peculiar characteristics of Tamoguna person is their tendency to take revenge. They are revengeful by nature. So a question arises, don't we need Tamas? Yes, we definitely need Tamas. We need the good aspects of Tamas like we need to take rest, we need to sleep well. One cannot say because Sattva is very good, one needs to have only Sattva. No, Sattva has to be supported by Rajas and Tamas. So what is this Triguna theory? We have so many differences amongst ourselves. When it comes to food preferences or lifestyle choices or selection of dress or thinking process or behavior, whatever we say, we see lots of differences amongst ourselves. These differences as per the Triguna theory is attributed to the proportion, the variation in proportion of the gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. Like a cloth is made up of threads, we all are made up of 
inherent qualities or tendencies that is termed as gunas as per this triguna theory of personality. Gunas definitely give an understanding of human behavior. It is good to evaluate where we stand with regards to these gunas. If we are tamoguna predominant, we need to slowly climb to rajoguna and then from there to sattva. The order of progression is from tamas to rajas to sattva. So summarizing the triguna theory, triguna theory is a theory of transformation that helps a person to transform from tamas to rajas, from rajas to sattva and from sattva to beyond sattva. Triguna theory is about individual development and self-management. So that is in brief about the Indian concept of personality. Thank you.